Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevail. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the name of Jesus. How many are glad you're in Bible school again? Yeah. Praise the Lord. This is our Sunday school. Amen. I just think it's exciting. We're talking about our prosperity, God's way for prosperity, our third in a session of four. These are just some ways to get you going in the name of Jesus. How many know that once you start applying the prosperities that God has for you, you're going to watch things change. You're going to watch stuff happen. And it's like, yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's put a demand upon the Spirit of God like we put demand upon electricity to turn the light bulbs on. Amen? So, Father God, we thank you in Jesus' name for this awesome message, prosperity your way. We thank you, Holy Spirit, to be our teacher, giving us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. Our eyes are open and ready to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're going to get right down to it. We've just got a few scriptures today instead of a million. I mean, you know that I always give you ten or more. There are some places, you know, they'll preach a message off of one or two scriptures, and that's it. And the whole 40 minutes goes by on one or two scriptures. That's amazing, isn't it? But you're stuck on two scriptures. So I figure you can meditate that on your own. Praise the Lord. I'm going to give you a bunch so you can go out there and learn so much faster in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's like if I was going to teach you a foreign language, and all I did was give you two or three words to memorize and tell you to say those. But if I gave you a sentence in that foreign language and you memorized that and you said it and you understood what you said, you could capture and you could start speaking paragraphs instead of just one word at a time. So this is why I give you tons in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord, for prosperity in God's way. All right. God needs you to have wealth for what he wants Amen? God wants you to have wealth for what He wants. The world wants wealth for what they want. How many know what does God want with your prosperity? It's amazing. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So God's going to give you financial increase, but he wants you to remember it was him that God gave you that increase. Not the job that you had, not because you went to school and it does help, but God. Say everybody, but God, amen. All right. There is a covenant rule for prosperity. I didn't hear anybody get excited. Amen. What, what are you amen about? What's the rule for prosperity? I'm about to give it to you. And you're, there is a rule. In other words, a law, something that functions. Covenant rule of prosperity. Okay? It's determined by what God wants, not by what you want. Okay? Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. And you go, really? Yeah. Because God wants his gospel preached on this earth. And it's going to cost money to do certain things. And without the money, you can't do it. So here you sit in your house trying to figure out how to pay your rent how to pay your mortgage, how to pay the, the utility bills. Seriously? God wants you to get over that. Well, how am I going to pay for my car payment? How will I, I lost three days worth of work. I don't have enough money coming in. Really? See, God wants you to get off of that and get on to what he wants. So what he wants is going to cost you or it's going to, it's going to cost more money than what you make. And you go, 
how do I do his work, which costs a whole lot more than what I make, how am I going to get that done? That's where you've got to open your eyes to say, he will bring it to you. Oh, now, I'm just, I'm not even reading this here. This is Holy Spirit talking to you. Can God trust you with a little bit of money? Let me give you, let me look at you straight in the face. Can God trust you with your money that you're making now? Can you bring in your tithes? Can you bring in your offerings? All of it? What makes you think that you're going to bring in the tithes and offerings if all of a sudden you got 15 times more money than you are right now? So let's say you're bringing in $100,000 a year and he starts giving you $200,000. Are you going to bring in all of that tithe? Can you, can you be trusted with the little? How can you be trusted with the much? So it's an important thing. Okay, Lord, I, I, I don't make a lot of money, but I'm going to bring in my tithes. I'm going to bring in an offering. I want to be a partner for the ministries. I want to give unto other ministries. I want to set money aside for, for all kinds of evangelists and all kinds of things. You're not talking about yourself, are you? But most people say the other direction. So God wants us to focus on him. Okay? So could you say your focus is your problem? So we must focus on what God wants, not what we want. So the key, how much does God want to prosper us? How much does he want to prosper you? Okay. Prosperity. It is the condition of being successful and thriving. All right. To have enough to do everything that God has called you to do. Do you have enough to do everything God has called you to do? How many can say no? God wants you, Nancy, to build a church. And he wants it started tomorrow. You don't have the money. And he wants you to drive a new car. And he wants you to buy new clothes. And he wants you to dress appropriately. He wants you to shop at Nordstrom's. He wants you to get this stuff done by the first of the month. That's his will. That's his calling. He just called you. Now, how are you going to do this? You can't do it with what's coming into your hand right at the moment. So how is that going to happen? This is where God, you see, our, prob, our, problem, our focus is on taking care of me, taking care of me, taking care of my bills, taking care of what I can do, because I'm barely getting by. That's a poor mentality thinking. So we've got to change the way we think, because we're going to prosper in God's way. Say, God has a way. He wants to prosper us, right? Right. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6 and verse 18. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Say communicate does not mean talking. It's talking about giving someone money. Okay? Are you willing and are you ready? You might be willing, but you're not ready. You might be willing, that, Lord, if I had extra 100 bucks, I'd give it away. Really? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, money comes to your pocket. And you don't realize, but $10 came today, 20 bucks next week. By the end of the month, you added an extra 100 Did you give it? No, you spend it on yourself. You said it. If I had an extra 100 I'd give it. And then the Lord brings you the money. It didn't show up at one day. It showed up in different days. See what I'm saying? So can he trust you with the little? And he's checking you out. And if you can't pass the test, he'll keep giving you a test until you pass. Say, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, having enough to do everything that God has ever, ever called you to do. That's the focus we all need to be on. 3 John chapter 2, excuse me, 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul, your mind, your will, and emotion prospers. Does your mind and your will and emotions prosper God's way? Oh, I don't have enough money. That didn't prosper. Your, your imaginations took off on you. You didn't stop to say, wait a second, that's my emotions getting out of the line. Mm -mm. My emotions or my, or my soul is not prospering. Thinking always, people go like this. Well, I turned off all the lights because I'm frugal. Really, God turned them all on because he wanted to see you. 
So you're thinking negative thoughts. You're thinking, I don't have the money to pay the electric bill. Seriously? You see, you got to get out of that mentality thinking. Everybody's with me? Do you have enough to do everything God has ever called you to do? It's probably because you don't have anything God isn't calling you. You go like, why? Lord, help. I need to figure this out. In Jesus' name. Amen? So let's go on. Let's go find out. Abraham was a good example. All right? Let's read the Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. In other words, get away from your mom and dad. Cut the apron strings. And from thy father's house and unto the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curses thee. And all the, and all, and thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And it got news for you. He didn't have nothing when he was called. Okay? God's given him a promise. All right? Is God promising you anything? Okay? First, Abraham had a good example. First, he had to get out of paganism. In other words, bad teaching. Going to the wrong place. Okay? Then, he got blessed. Money is not an end. It is a means to an end. Okay? It is to advance God's kingdom. It's like gasoline. It's not the end in itself. Are you with me? Okay? We look at it as like money is the biggest God in the world. We serve money. No, money serves you. You tell money to do this, it is your servant. I tell this one to go, he goes. I tell this one to come, he comes. And you've got to start thinking and using your faith in that direction. Okay? To know God is to have it all. To get is not to have. You have got to protect the covenant because the enemy will come to steal it. Okay? In Genesis 15, 1 through 6. And these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. I may start to see something. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, notice where Abram was. What do I get out of this? And the Lord said, wait, 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 wait. That's not how this is working. Okay? All right? So the idea behind it is to get is not to have. You've got to protect the covenant because the enemy is going to come and steal it. I may start to see something here. How many times have you thought you're going to put money away and all of a sudden you have to buy something else? The devil came to stole, and stole your stuff. How, how did he get, a, get away with it and you not to know it? How come you weren't protecting that which God gave you? Hmm. You're taking it for granted instead of really putting out prayer time. Moving on. All right, prosperity is being tied to covenant understanding. Okay? God's intent was for the people to take back what Satan had stolen, increasing mightily. The Abrahamic covenant was primarily material-oriented. Cities, properties, etc. Okay? So, prosperity is being tied to covenant understanding. So, let's read De Deuteronomy 6, 1-3. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. Teach you and to do it. Okay? 
that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, that thy days may be prolonged. Hear thee, O Israel, observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. So, you want to prosper in the things that you're being taught? You're going to have to do it. So when I tell people, have you, have you watched the videos? Did you read the scripture? Did you do this? Did you do that? And they don't do it. How are you going to prosper if you don't learn how to do it? Are you, is that making sense? So are you on this earth to pay for all your bills or on this earth to serve the Lord? We, we make the decision to pay the bills before we serve the Lord. We've got to turn this around. Say, God will show you how to pay for your bills. But if you serve him first, then all these things will be added unto you. Say, thank you, Lord. All right. Your managerial skills will limit your inheritance. Did you get it? I'm going to say it again. Your managerial skills will limit your inheritance. So if you do not know how to take care and manage your finances, you don't know how to manage your own thing, those skills will limit your inheritance. Is that making sense to anybody here? Okay. The secret to handling wealth is to be a good manager. Okay. God will give out to the limit of your skill level. Oh boy, did you get that? Have you ever wondered why the poor people don't get ahead? Because their managerial skills suck. How many understand what I'm saying? So you go look at yourself, yeah, but, no, yeah, but. Why don't you find out how to manage something? You still got time to learn. Amen. Amen. I'll take, I'm going to pick on Sarah for a minute. I made her, I made her get a checking account when she was young. I made her to learn to reconcile the checkbook. I made her to figure out all that stuff, sitting right here in church, right there on a the table, and she'd come back with all her checks and we'd reconcile it on the paper that the bank gives you. And I can all bet you five bucks she still doesn't do it that way. So now she's gone to managerial skills to QuickBooks and puts it all in there and has it downloaded into her program and checks it all out, and it's a done deal. So the managerial skills have increased. But is there anything else you can learn to do? You could learn more business skills. There's a lot of things you can learn. And the more managerial skills that you have, there you go, God will give out to the limit of your skill level. I mean, you can see that you want to increase. You can't just sit back and say, well, yeah, I know how to do two and two and four. You got to learn how to do a little bit more. Say amen. So if you don't have a check in your book and you don't have to know how to do that, say your managing skills are not very good. You need to get up with the program. Amen. Okay. So I don't want to be sitting there with just a little bit of what God can give me when he's, you know, he's got the whole thing for me. How about you? Okay. All right. God will chasten us to prepare us for greater inheritance. As God provides greater wealth, make sure that your heart does not turn or you're going to get in trouble. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 8, 5 through 20. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks and water, of fountains and depths and springs out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. 
When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherewith their fiery serpents and scorpions and draught, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to the, do thee good at thy latter end. And thou shalt say in thy heart, my power and the might of mine hand has gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish thy covenant, which he swore unto thy father as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall you perish, because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. So, he demands excellence. Don't you? Of course. Amen. So when, when we are born again, we are born to an inheritance. Isn't that good news? Okay. Isaac was born to an inheritance, not just as a son of Abraham. God never took away Israel's inheritance, even when they were in rebellion. That same is true for the church. Okay, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. To an inheritance. And I want to stop and tell you this. When people ask you, well, tell us how you got born again and tell us how you got saved and what God did for you. Everybody tells their testimony of their crap, of all the junk, of all the nasty stuff, all the drug addicts. All the, they tell all that. Instead of saying, God got a hold of me right off the bat, I got born again, to an inheritance, and this is what I'm doing for God. Who cares about the garbage? Right? There are a lot of places that people think they're going to the right place to hear a testimony. I don't want to hear the junk. Do you want to hear the junk? No. I want to hear what two that inheritance is. So I can receive my inheritance because I saw how you got yours. How many can say that's a lot better to hear than to listen to a testimony of ill wills? Our last scripture. How many know that God thinks covenant? How many men think covenant toward their wife? God thinks covenant. He does not think the way we would have him think. It is never what you want. It's always what he wants. What does God want? Let's find out. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord, but we can learn. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for this awesome teaching of prosperity, God's way. So we have figured it out, Lord, from hearing these scriptures that we are trustworthy with the little. And we're learning how to do the things that you want, which is more important than what I want. 
So I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, as I'm bringing this up in my own prayer, I'm thinking, you know, there's so many times I want to go do this and I want to go do that. And I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that and I don't come to church. So I'm really not doing it your way. So Pastor Robert has learned over the years, you do whatever you want to do outside of going to church so you make sure that you come to church in Jesus' name, even if it costs you. So I thank you, Father, that each and every person has learned something. What God wants is more important than what we want in Jesus' name. And all the people God said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video, and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.